Hi guys, I am Marcus Schultz. Welcome to my studio. I just released my new artist album, Scream, and uh, I thought I'd give you a little tour of, uh, of kind of what went into uh, making this artist album. Um, you know, it's probably my, the, the most diverse artist album I've ever made. There's a, tw a total of 23 tracks that we released, 12 vocals, 11 instrumentals, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, a lot for everybody. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do with this album was first, I wanted to make sure that every single track on the album I could play in my DJ sets. You know, I don't play the same uh, sets in every city. Some, uh, some cities maybe I'll go down the rabbit hole a little bit more, some are more festivals. Um, so you know having a diverse album was very important for me because that way I could pick and choose which tracks I want to play at which particular gig. So um, I think we've accomplished that. Uh, like I said 23 uh, total tracks and um, I'm very very happy with it. Anyway let me take you uh, a little bit into uh, the things that went on and, and how we made this, uh, some of the tracks on this album. The first track, um, the first release was a, a track that I did with Adina Buttar. Um, I made a, a, a little instrumental track for her because um, we were talking online and uh, the, the original track was you know just a little mellow um, track with this little riff. this little riff here and uh, she was in Romania and uh, took the, uh, the the melody from the riff and uh, she went in and recorded some vocals um, the vocals when I got them How does it feel? Whoa. she sent me uh, these vocals and one of the nice things about the vocals that she sent is uh, she, uh, she triples her vocals, so they sound really, really big and really massive. Um, and then once I got her vocals, uh, then we started adding effects to, uh, to everything. And uh, we recreated the track underneath it to kind of, uh, like I said, I wanted each one of these tracks to work in the clubs um, to be really massive. So then we went into uh, um, the session and, um, like I said, just kind of made it a, a little bit stronger. And uh, this is kind of the end result here. So, like I said, the, the idea behind every single track is, you know, work with the songwriter, um, get a nice uh, little melody, a little uh, little thing going on, and then just like really jack it up for the clubs and make it kind of a uh, big room. Um, so this is the first track uh, from uh, the, the first single from the album, uh, Caught, uh, featuring the vocals of Adina Buttar. The next track I want to show you is a, a track that um, I tested it out in one of my uh, solo sets at Ministry of Sound in London. I wasn't even finished with the track yet, um, I just wanted to test it out. It's a track, Nothing Without Me, featuring the vocals of Ana Diaz. Um, one of you guys out there snapped it up on, uh, uh, on video from your iPhone and uploaded it to YouTube. And uh, from there it just kind of created this uh, huge buzz. People are messaging me, what is this track? Um, and I mean, we, c we already had a feeling right then and there that this was going to be massive. When Anna first sent me these vocals, um, I mean, I had goosebumps. I, it was, I, I sat there and I just listened to them. And the lyrical content is amazing. It was just like, I had this vision of like, it, this is like, this is a stalker anthem, you know? And one of the things about this track is, I was making the track, or the music around it, and I just didn't think it, it really complemented the, uh, the vocals, the, the, the anger and the, the despair in the vocals. And not until I decided to only use the vocals in the breakdown is when the track, to me, really started coming to life. So uh, for this track, it was important to just have a, a really killer groove, and then when, uh, when the track kicked in, just have the vocals and just a little little riff going and then just build it from there. I think it really gave the track uh, the opportunity to kind of for people to hear the vocals, for the for the tension in the vocals to really come through. So this is a track featuring the vocals of Anna Diaz, Nothing Without Me.
The next track I want to show you guys is a track that we just released as a single. Um, it is Love Rain Down On Me, featuring the vocals of Siri. Um, there's an interesting story about this. Uh, her management, I've known um, for a long time, big management out of New York City. And uh, when they signed her, they sent me uh, the vocals. They said, Marcus, you got to hear this. This sounds like it's something that's perfect for you. Um, so when I heard it, I was blown away. Her voice was so nice, it's, uh, especially when, uh, when, when I played it with just the piano. Her voice and then the piano, um, that's what we started with. And you can hear. When I heard that vocal, I just said, you know, this is something special. This is something that um, could cross over. This is cross over to, to radio and to mainstream. But, you know, every track like this needs a big riff. So we really spent some time um, to make sure that you came up with a, a, a massive riff that's just going to sound like, you know, you can hear it at the, uh, what I envisioned was in a big arena and hearing the riff all the way in the back of the arena. So, uh, um, Worked on a riff a little bit, and this is what we came up with. So from there, we had an amazing voice, a really aggressive, nice, big riff, and from there, it was just all about arranging it properly. And um, I think this track is one of those tracks that uh, you can hear on the radio, you can hear it at a big festival, you can sing along to. And at the same time, we just got some remixes done by Mayan and Shane 54, Four Strings, and Dobrook and Klein. So all of the remixes also work uh, to kind of hit uh, different DJs and, and different uh, settings. So um, I'm really, really proud of this track. It's uh, uh, Love Rain Down On Me featuring the vocals of Siri. The next track I want to show you is a collaboration I did with two guys. Um, one of the hot up and coming guys uh, that uh, is out of Colombia named Coma, and one of the uh, like legends from Cold Harbor, uh, Elevation. Um, I had them both here in the studio and um, we just started jamming out. I think what's really great about this track is you can really hear like all three of our uh, influences. Um, I'll play you some uh, pieces of this track, but uh, at the beginning you can really hear the like the typical aggressive Marcus Schultz bass line. And of course when it kicks in you can really kind of hear the, the really, you know, the, the typical coma groove. Here in this part, you hear the typical coma groove where it's just like build, build, build with a little square stick. And then right in this part is where the melody comes in. And I think this is the part that elevation just excels at. It's uh, when the melody comes in. So, like I said, what I think is so amazing about this track is uh, there's there's like three distinctive personalities that's in this track, uh, and if you study this track, you can really you can you know exactly who did what part, and uh, it was really a, an honor and, and a lot of fun to work with both guys because they're both uh, you know future legends uh, in in their own ways. So uh, uh, this track right here, Triatonic, uh, collaborations with uh, Elevation and Coma. The next track I want to play for you guys is um, this is kind of a, a typical, um, you know, Marcus way of uh, creating a track. Um, I remember I had a, a, a bit of a rough gig. Um, I don't remember the exact city it was, but uh, I had quite a rough gig, and I was just sitting on the airplane, just looking out the window, and uh, you know, just kind of all these uh, thoughts were in my head. So I started creating a track, um, and just 
typed in Soul Seeking at the beginning. Um, this track I started on the airplane and uh, just sketched out some ideas and, uh, and then brought it back into the studio and then from, from those ideas created and, and perfected the track. But uh, this is kind of what the, when I'm working on an airplane, this is kind of what a session looks like and also what it sounds like. So I'm going to play you the very, very original draft uh, of Soul Seeking first. So then I brought it here into the Cold Harbor Studios and jacked it up and this is the final version. One of the tracks on the album that has been in every single DJ set uh, since uh, we've come up with the track is this collaboration that I did with Elevation called Finish Line. Um, the way this track came about, um, Elevation had been sitting on this riff that he had wrote uh, probably for over a year and uh, never had any, any direction on where to take the riff. Uh, when I first heard the riff, I was like, I was blown away. I was, uh, this is what I first heard. And then from that, um, all these ideas started coming to my head, uh, uh, just to how this track, how that riff could sound uh, in a big stadium with lots and lots of layers and, and, and lots of aggressive pitch bends and, and, and crazy buildups. Um, so I'll just kind of play the track a little bit and then uh, solo some of the elements that we added on top of it to kind of give it that massive stadium feel because I think this track um, is like the perfect example of a Marcus Schultz stadium track and, and like I said I've been playing this track in my DJ sets ever since it was created and, it, and I think it's going to be in my DJ sets for a long long time so here's uh, the track that I did with Elevation called Finish Line <laughs> track I want to play for you guys is uh, it's a very special track it's a track that I did uh, featuring Jaren it's called carry on um, what was really nice about this track is uh, I, I sent her uh, an instrumental track and uh, she sent me back the vocals and and she told me that um, it was a very very special song for her uh, when she wrote it um, so you know uh, with with that in mind I wanted to make sure and, and kind of give the track a kind of a special treatment. I'll play you the, the very original um, version of Carry On um, that uh, when I first got it back from Jaren. <laughs> Now, 
Now, you know, like I said, what I wanted to do with this album is just make sure that every single track I was going to be able to play in my DJ sets. And whereas I, I, I absolutely loved um, what we had done uh, on the original version, I just thought it was very important to, um, you know, make it bigger, make it more massive. And at the same time, since it was a very uh, um, important song for Jaren, and, uh, and it was a very emotional track, I, at the same time, I wanted to keep um, the emotion in the track. So I uh, went in the studio and uh, I think the big thing that I uh, focused on then was just tension and then making a massive bass line to co complement uh, the vocals and then in the breakdown um, raise up uh, the, the really the, the more melancholy leads that are in there and that gives it the, the big room feel and at the same time the melody. So this is uh, the final version of uh, Carry On after I uh, brought it back into the studio. The next one I want to show you is uh, a track, it's a great story behind this one. The track was originally called Space Cakes um, when, when I started creating the session. So um, I did it uh, the last time I was in Amsterdam. Um, and uh, this is <laughs> kind of sketched out this, uh, this melody in the, in the hotel room and then on the airplane. Uh, so let me play it for you first, uh, the, the first sketch. So that's what uh, what I came home with, and uh, of course, um, you know, I, I sent that little clip around to everybody, and uh, and of course, uh, I got plenty of uh, replies to my email saying, you can't use the word the name Space Cakes. So um, after I gave it some thought and uh, renamed it to Don't Leave Before the Sunrise because. Uh, you know, I figured, I imagined playing this set kind of towards the end of my DJ sets, especially on those long sets uh, um, like the marathon sets that I play at Avalon in Hollywood and, and Stereo in Montreal, places like that. But then I brought it here to the studio and, um, you know, just uh, worked on uh, developing it uh, further and into a full track. And uh, here is uh, kind of like the, the end result. That's just uh, uh, some of the tracks from the album and some of the stories and uh, uh, of how the tracks came about. I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, I thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, the new artist album, Scream, it's out there. 23 tracks, 12 vocals, 11 instrumentals. Um, everything that uh, uh, from A to Z and from a Marcus Schultz DJ set. Once again, thank you guys and I'll talk to you soon.